Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So I was waiting here for the time to come in. Then I have to go pray Maghrib. But then I looked at the clock there still a few times until I realized that uh, the time on the stove is not uh, accurate. So this type of excuses uh, may work sometimes, but in reality is that when, when times comes, when, when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us and, and say, this is the time of certain event in our life, it doesn't matter what we think the time is. It's what the time that Allah is running this, this life and this dunya on. So Ramadan is once again upon us. Some of us may not be ready, like myself. Some are uh, been waiting for a long time and they're up and running and they're, they're, they're all ready. And some being ready and uh, until the moment before Ramadan, they got distracted. And they maybe tonight they went to some uh, some uh, other events other than praying Taraweeh. So the reason I'm mentioning all this is dunya is really this life is not really up to us. Sometimes people think, hey, uh, all I have to do is uh, is uh, work hard and I'm in control. The reality is we have to admit that at the end of the day, we are human beings. Human beings, we can do what we can do. And then there are a portion of it, a big portion that is out of our control. That's why for me, I feel that I need to be uh, a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I need to be living for a greater purpose. Otherwise, not only that I cannot control my faith and my life, but also uh, life is very vulnerable and we don't know where to lean to. We cannot lean to other human beings. We cannot lean to people that may be weaker than us. We cannot rely on technology. We cannot rely even on a, on a, a timepiece on a device. And this type of reminder comes again and again to us. When we lose power, uh, even in, in industrial countries, uh, technological savvy countries, when the internet is slow and everything, everybody thought, okay, we can work virtual, but when the power and the internet lost, we, we don't know what to do. Uh, we think we can, uh, have whatever, as long as we have the money, we can run the cars and run our life, but then uh, war may break and we don't uh, find a gas station enough supply. Uh, when the pandemic hits, all these things are out of our control. So the wise person is to learn from these events, learn from these events by knowing that, that we are human beings and we turn to Allah, the most powerful, to help us. So that is the first thing that I remind myself when it comes to Ramadan. How do we welcome Ramadan? Is by reminding ourselves it's going to be some new changes in our life. We may think we're ready. We may be tough. Maybe our days may be harder than the other. But because we're relying on Allah, whatever it goes, uh, we get reward inshallah. So in Islam, we are not based on, uh, we're not rewarded based absolutely on result. There's a, a, poor, a, a mixture of result, effort, intention. It, it's it's a, a black box that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control. Uh, he's the one who judge, judge us and and, and we're really blessed and, and grateful that he's the one, the most merciful is judging us, not ourselves, not our neighbor, not anyone else. 
So that's the first thing uh, I want to mention about when it comes to uh, Ramadan. There are three other things that uh, I want to share with everyone about preparing for Ramadan. Is that uh, Ramadan is uh, a change of pace, change of life. And those who live in a Western world, we may have to go out of our way. And that's when we, some of people may find uh, more difficulties or, or uphill uh, journey to adjust because maybe the, their work is not really accommodating, their school schedule is different. And some are more in control and uh, they have uh, find uh, their peers and surrounding are very understanding. And we at Muslim space, as just like we say, we uh, the, the mission is and the goal is to create a, a, a space where Muslim belongs. Uh, we also sometimes have to push that space to, to be invited and belonging and inviting other people into this, this occasion, this Ramadan. Uh, other people may not know it. Uh, so including Muslim, they may, sometimes they don't know that Ramadan is already entering, even that because they're maybe they, they're new to this country or they uh, maybe being taken, uh, got busy with life and carried away. So that's why when it comes Ramadan, we also want to be accommodating other people and also inviting others to uh, accommodate us and, and, in, and invite them into our practice and space. So this is uh, number, uh, point number two. So um, point number three I would like to share is that uh, in the recent day or years, you can see that there are a lot of businesses showcasing uh, Ramadan advertisement. There are things that sold in Party City and all and the likes, like uh, Ramadan lights and, and 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 different decals. And and there are, uh, these are for us. It's a welcoming message for us as a, as consu Muslim consumers. But you also have to know and if you envision this journey of life, if Ramadan is a, is a train and it, it comes and go, and it will help us to accelerate in our journey. So there are people who, when the train came, they were ready and hopped on the train and got their seat and reached their destination at the end of Ramadan. And there are also people at the station uh, admiring this bullet train and this high-speed train, whatever train. And they, they are waving and cheering and the train came and left and they, they went home and thought that's about it in life. And that's the thing in Ramadan is that uh, the, the way we welcome it, the way we treat it, uh, it can be, as deep, as meaningful, as spiritual as you want to be, uh, or you intend in, intending to be. You can be just that person who just, hey, Ramadan is here and wave and send some greeting messages. You could be putting some, some celebratory lights and, and decals at home. Uh, but you can also be that person that invites Ramadan into your life, into your space, into your home to your, the people around you. Make that Ramadan change, uh, make, make it uh, a, a lasting experience in your server. So that's a question that all of us will want, uh, need to ask ourselves, including uh, starting for myself, is what I want to be after Ramadan. So there's a story recently, I, I listened to a book about regret by uh, Daniel Pink and uh, the story that uh, Alfred Nobel, he, he, he was alive and saw in the newspaper his death story and the headlines like the, the, the merchant of death is, die, is, is died or something like that has died. 
and you know, obituary and people are uh, criticizing his practices and, and, and during his lifetime. So that actually given a, a, an opportunity to think about his life. So it turned out that they mixed up between his brother's death and his, and, and that's why they announced the, the, the news. So the reason I'm saying that is we don't get that, uh, that chance often. We, death, life, when can we fast? When can we plan our life? Uh, is really uncertain. Uncertain, and as I mentioned, an example like COVID, war, and all that, so many uh, levels of uncertainties. So you want to think about how do you want to feel? How do you want to be? What kind of state, whether your heart, your body, or your mental state after Ramadan? Uh, no, nobody wants to have regrets in life. And especially when you realize, and, and that, that's a good realization that you, you, you think, oh, I missed the Ramadan train. The, 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 the worse than that is we don't even regret that. We don't even realize. So the one big problem in, in the things around us, whether it comes to health or life balance, is we don't even realize the society, including us, myself, uh, I don't realize that the time has, has passed or something has met, I missed something or, or something is in balance and out of balance in our life. So having a checkpoint, having a, a feedback loop, it's very important to ourselves. And so we mentioned that Ramadan is a time to reflect that we are our shortages or that we're our weaknesses and relying on Allah. We mentioned that we need to uh, hop on this fast train and utilize it to get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mentioned that we, we want to be, on, on when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is among the, those who are happy and not those who are regretful and at state of loss. So during Ramadan, we usually read Quran and if we go to the masjid or even just tune in online, lots of talk of going through different uh, teachings of, uh, of the Prophet uh, the life of the companion, the, the, and the stories in the Quran, as I mentioned, first thing. Sometimes we may not see the relevancy or the, the similitude of, of how this teaching is applicable to us. So uh, I've been observing that some of these stories that of, of people, uh, how human beings are, are strange and odd and how our psychological brain may not make sense sometime. It's really is all around us, including ourselves. So for example, we always think that we know better. Until you become like a parent or a teacher or even manager, you have to deal with some other people that clearly they don't know what's right or wrong, and yet they are still thinking that they know better. And so that is really a moment to reflect, is that we may not know everything. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell you that something's good for you, he knows much more than you much more in us. The struggle and the, and the stress that we go through when we deal with our children, our like, like the people that we have to deal with in life and we keep thinking, why, why can't they get it? Why don't they just take the advice? Why don't they, oh, you, you name it. We actually do it ourselves. 
we, we there are things that may not be healthy habits. We still cannot quit it. We, we keep doing the wrong thing. There are things that is wiser that we pay attention to our, our life, our purpose, our relationship with the, our creator. Uh, we tend to put it in the back burner or just, just neglect it. So all this are uh, a reminder. This is not just about those a certain class, like uh, religious people, certain people who are, you know, they are retired, they have more time. It is, it is you. I have to take care of myself, my relationship with my creator. These questions comes uh, and remind us only when we are being forced to pause in our life, whether that's a sickness or death of a loved one or something that just strikes you and you makes, Allah gives you that opportunity to, to pause and think. So as much as we think, like for my oath, I give young children that I think they are ungrateful. The moment you give them a, a gift, they will be complaining and comparing to other gifts. Uh, the moment you give them one sweetie treat, they want another one. That type of behavior as, as parents, we think is very annoying and ungrateful. You just cannot stand it. This is exactly the same that we do it, how we treat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is exactly how human beings at, at large treating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is mentioned in the hadith, the Prophet said, uh, how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that the son of Adam is, is cursing him, attributing falsehood to him, and he's still giving them left and right. He's blessing them every day. The, all this power and might and money that you see in our society, those people are, are just thinking that they, they deserve everything. They have the right to do anything. That is just a sign when, when you think they are arrogant and then you cannot stand this injustice in society. We sometimes do it to our Allah subhanahu wa to, and to the loved one in our life. We may do it to our parents, to, to people that we're supposed to maintain a kind relationship, a respectful professional ties. So this is another chance that we have to think through in Ramadan. And, and uh, lastly, I want to mention that to us, Islam is a set of uh, belief system, a set of things that we have to do, physical actions. Uh, like salah, things that we have to think in our mind, invoking with our uh, tongue, like um, asking Allah and praying to him, supplications. And Ramadan is uh, another dimension that we have to uh, fulfill and utilize to get closer and build that relationship with Allah through this dim dimension, which is feeling in, in ourselves and abstaining instead of doing something is more abstaining from doing something abstaining from doing that something that part of your life it's uh, a natural survival instinct to to uh, to eat and drink uh, a natural thing is that you you want to rest and sleep at night instead of praying yeah. natural thing to be lazy instead of reading quran uh, so this type of worship makes you realize and experience this faith at the deeper level, at, at the like extra dimension. I remember uh, at, at the university, uh, there are some Muslims who don't uh, practice, uh, but when it comes to Ramadan, they will say, oh, yeah, I want to fast a few days just to get the feeling of it. Maybe something they remembered while they're young or something uh, similar to that. Uh, uh, giving them the memory and, uh, and the spiritual boost. But that exactly it is. It's, it's this sweetness. You only feel it when you go through that hunger and the fatigue and, 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 and the 
and the short temper in your day and month and, and still uh, be patient and go, go through it. That's when you feel the sweetness of end of the day, the slimy farhatan, farhatan and the fitri, that the, the fasting person, the Prophet Sallallahu said the fasting, fasting person has two uh, joyful moments. One of them is when they break their fast and the other one is when they meet their Lord. So this is just a reminder that as, as, as you be patient and go through it and you get your, your small reward, uh, the same thing for the life. As you're patient and go through it, you'll get your reward uh, uh, on the judgment day, inshallah. And, and this it is the biggest reminder for ourselves. When it comes to Ramadan, uh, fasting and all that things, and like all the, all the aspects of it, we, we don't really know like there's no, we cannot just boil down this multidimensional practice into one single element. Oh, it's just about hunger. It's just about reminding us of those who are unfortunate, don't have food. It, it, it is more than that. It, it is a comprehensive experience. We cannot just do a, being a, doing a disservice that to just boil it down to one, one of one a few points that because we realize that we are limited to it and the reason i'm saying that is back to this big picture human beings we need to breathe to live uh, part of our life and just being a biological being we need to breathe we need to eat we need to sleep we need to go to the bathroom and you know that in our busy life uh, are, it's very normal. People say, hey, back-to-back uh, -back meetings and uh, I haven't gone to the bathroom you know, or the half day gone and like, oh, I haven't had any water or the, uh, they work like three, two days straight, didn't sleep well, didn't have a good meal. This is our state of success in this life. We are like, we brag about it, how busy we are or how oppressed we are because the employer or the boss or the, the money that makes us busy that we have to go through that sacrifice. And those who are practicing like breathing and relaxation, the Eastern techniques, they always say that, oh, we, we forget how to breathe now. So you have to have deep, deep breath and just to relax and be healthy. So I want to remind everybody and tie it back that there's one also element is that we, as much we, we, we think we don't have to belong and, uh, and worship and be uh, uh, feel that we are servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are a, a worshiper of, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a, a true meaning in life that gives us meaning and purpose. As, well, as much as we, we think we don't need that aspect in our life, that's a neglected thing in our life. So, so with that, I'll end with the, the verse that كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ الصِّيَامُ يَا يُوَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That all you who believe, it is prescribed uh, upon you, just like uh, prescribed on the people before you and you to fast, so you may obtain a state of consciousness and taqwa. And so... That realization is, is, to me, for this year, is that just like we realize, oh, we, we, we need to take a break, we need to go and drink water and, and breathe and go to the bathroom and sleep, we need to get closer to Allah. This will give us a peaceful mind, give us success, and give us even mean, uh, just more sustenance and everything. And, and I don't have to de uh, go through the verses and the evidence and the true stories of that people did uh, and have a well-balanced life and yet Allah sustained them, give them good health and happy life. So may Allah Ta'ala subhanahu wa ta'ala give us wisdom and, and success in this month, give us the patience to go through it. And whenever we 
are impatient with things that are going through our life, the people around us, we think we're better than them. It's time to uh, give us uh, ourselves a wake up call that we are just like them. And if we're not like them, we, we, uh, we have to thank Allah for that. Uh, and with that, uh, I uh, thank the organizer. And uh, if there are any questions or comments, uh, uh, I can be here. And may Allah give us the, the, the wisdom to go through this Ramadan and utilize it in a way and form and shape that he uh, that's pleasing him. And may Allah help us to realize that we need him and we need to maintain this relationship with him. And, uh, and we need uh, Ramadan more than Ramadan needs us. I mean. <laughs>